I found 75p on the kitchen table. Oh, uh, yes, that's mine, Edith. Uh, will you put any loose change you find in that tortoiseshell box up on the shelf there? You mean out of sight? <laughs> well, not out of sight, exactly. But away from little fingers. <laughs> well, it's not that I don't trust Matthew, but I don't think we should put temptation in his path. On the grounds that he seems totally unable to resist it. You don't have to tell me. Do you know he's eaten his way through a packet of jelly, a box of Oxo cubes, and a set of plastic cake decorations since last week? Enid, why didn't you tell me this before? I didn't know before. He eats up from the bottom like a mouse. <laughs> Did you say the tortoiseshell box? Yes, put it with the rest. Rest? There isn't any rest, it's empty. <laughs> It was almost two pounds in there. Well, don't look at me. I've no plans to leave the country at the moment. <laughs> Tell Matthew I want a word with him, would you? <laughs> yes? I seem to have lost two pounds in change. You haven't seen it, have you? No, but I do wish you wouldn't leave change lying around, Dad. Why? Because if it disappears, I'm going to fall under suspicion. That's right. You can catch me leaving money lying around. Yeah, that's what worries me. I see. So you think I've taken it? Perhaps you'd like to search me. You won't find anything. I don't carry money in my pockets. It wears out the linings. Money doesn't stay in your pockets long enough to wear out the linings. All right, if you don't leave it lying around, you don't keep it in your pockets, where do you keep it? In the tortoiseshell box on the bookshelves. What? Well, that's where I keep mine. Is it? Well, that explains something. What? Why it keeps disappearing. <laughs> disappearing? Listen, Toad, it's my money that's disappeared. Two pounds of it. That's stealing by finding, and I want it back. Couldn't you take it out of the family allowance? I don't get the family allowance. <laughs> so you say. I don't. Your mother's keeping it until you pay off what you owe her. Apparently, you have very expensive tastes. I can't help having expensive tastes. Then get yourself a paper round. I'm too old for a paper round. You mean too idle. I had a paper round. Yes, yes, I remember when you were ten. But you didn't keep it, did you? Because the papers were always late. <laughs> when that customer phoned about his daily telegraph, where were you? At the end of his drive, reading it. <laughs> you, you could have shouted the news through the letterbox. Look, I'm not afraid of work, but there is a recession. It's difficult to get a job these days. Just, aren't you forgetting something? I got you a job. I used my influence to get you a position at the video shop. It lasted an afternoon. He didn't like me. He didn't like you because when that woman came in for a cartoon film for the kids, you sent her away with lesbian lovers. <laughs> I told you it was in the wrong box. Anyway, they must have enjoyed it. They kept it for three days. <laughs> That's longer than you kept that job. No, let's face it. I think you're unemployable. You'll never earn any money. In that case, I'll have to sell my poems. Poems? What about poems? These. I was going to wait and sell them as my collected works, but since I'm desperate for money, I may have to sell them individually. Well, do you think anyone would buy them? I don't see why not. Well, let me see. Watching for a reason, waiting for a cause. We need someone to follow when the leader falls. <laughs> not bad, is it? Well, at least it rhymes. Go on. Moving in to rip his flesh, tearing out his heart, removing all meaning. Blind hate means nothing at all. Right. <laughs> Blind hate means nothing at all? Yep. Well, that's longer than the other lines, and it doesn't rhyme. That's intentional. Intentional? That line's being dragged behind me like a bad leg. And what, what does it mean? Blind hate means nothing at all. Well, neither does this verse. No one's going to buy this rubbish. You don't like it. <laughs> well, it's hardly I wandered lonely as a cloud, is it? In fact, it confirms what I've always thought. What's that? You've got a sick mind. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I do have a job to go to. Yeah? Well, 
where's that? Where's that? I've been at the same place for 20 years and you say, where's that? Well, no, you pop out every day. <laughs> Don't pop out. I work at International. Are they very big? International. And you've been there 20 years? Yes. Bit of a dead-end job, then, is it? <laughs> what makes you think that? Well, you've been there 20 years and we still haven't got a video. <laughs> well, progress has been a little slow, but... Uh... The race isn't always to the swiftest, and I have a feeling that this may be my year. Why? Well, it so happens that I've caught the eye of F.G. Fielding, head of admin. He's noticed my hard work and dedication, and he has intimated that uh, there may be a promotion within his section. Is he the one with the funny daughter? <laughs> funny daughter? <laughs> the ugly one who keeps trying to unload on eligible executives. Who told you that? You did. <laughs> yeah, well, she's not that ugly. As a matter of fact, some people think she's quite attractive. Outlook fair. <laughs> Dad, Look. if you do get this promotion, will I get an allowance? No. <laughs> I didn't expect you at this time. Would you like some lunch? No, no, I just wanted to work with Matthew. <laughs> Where's the barometer? It's gone. Yes, I can see it's gone. Where is it? I'm not saying where it's gone or who's had it, <laughs> but just watch my eyes. <laughs> what are you doing with my barometer? Correction, my barometer. What do you mean? That was my father's. I know. And Grandad Willows always said I was to have his barometer. Well, when did he say that? On his deathbed. He put a trembling hand on mine and he said, Matthew, you're the firstborn of my firstborn. And I want you to have my barometer. He never talked like that. <laughs> he did on his deathbed. <laughs> he said, when I'm dead and gone, you'll be able to tap this barometer and see what the day's going to be like. I'll tell you what it's going to be like. Bloody stormy if he doesn't go back on that wall. And when you do, it'll remind you of me. Because we always looked at that barometer together. Who said that? Old Grandad Willows. Yeah. Nice old man. Salt of the earth. What are you going to do with it? Sell it. <laughs> Sell it? I thought he had sentimental value. You don't understand. I'm desperate for money. You forgot what it's like to be broke. All right. What is it this time? Something to further my career, as a matter of fact, to help me earn a living. Well, why didn't you say? I'm always prepared to help you in your career. You know that. Well, what is it? Textbooks? Course fees? No. It's an electric guitar. <laughs> oh, no. I'm forming a group. Who with? Mrs. Thompson? I don't see any group. It's not formed yet. Well, it's not going to be either. Not round here. But Dad, I could make a lot of money. Why not? Because I can think of one grave disadvantage. You're tone deaf. It'd take you a year to tune it. But Dad... I am not giving you money to buy an electric guitar, and that's final. All right, let me earn it. I'll clean the house. I'll hoover and dust. No. Why not? Anyone can do that. How much do you pay E.T.? One fifty an hour. <laughs> But we're in the second round of pay talks. I'll do it for a quid, and I won't drop things. I see. Any fool can do my job, is that it? The fact that I work my fingers to the bone and never get a word of thanks? The fact that I arrive home drained of energy, looking like a piece of chewed string? That doesn't matter, does it? I'm just a woman. I don't count. Enid. Excuse me. I'm just going to run my wrists under the cold tap. <laughs> No, you've done it. There's going to be tears in the semolina again. <laughs> Get your coat. Where are we going? To the job centre. <laughs> Not much here. Oh, I don't know. What about washing dishes? 80p an hour. I don't fancy that. Not washing dishes. What's the matter, Frank? You might get red hands. No. It's just not very stimulating. I'll see what's on the other side. Can I help you? Uh, yes, um, have you got any part-time work? Any special skills? Uh, no. Pity. At your age, that makes you virtually unemployed. <laughs> uh, you don't understand. I've got a job. Have you? Really? Where? At International. 
nothing going there, I suppose. Well, I don't know. Is there someone you want us to see? Yes, me. <laughs> I'm fed up with this job. All day long I'm shuffling these cards and nobody will take one. And then you come in wanting a night job. No, it isn't for me, it's for my... It's for my... It's for him. Your son? Yeah. I sympathise, I've got one exactly the same. <laughs> if I'd have known then what I know now, I don't think I'd have bothered. Come along, Sonny, let's see what we can find for you. Ah, now here's one. Part-time poultry packer. Nope. No? I can't stand chicken. You're gonna pack them, not eat them. <laughs> no, I couldn't bear to handle them. Uh, well, uh, what, what, what about this one? Uh, rubbing down horses for the hunt. One pound an hour? Nope. No? I'm against blood sports. <laughs> well, then, what about this one? <laughs> Ah, here's one. Part-time window cleaner. You've nothing against windows, have you? No. Oh, good. But I can't stand heights. <laughs> Whenever I get up a ladder, I imagine I hear this voice saying, jump. What makes you think you imagine it? <laughs> uh, uh, wait, wait a moment. Uh, perhaps we're approaching this the wrong way. What would you like to do? What about something in advertising or travel? Ah. I've got the very job, advertising and travel. You wear a billboard and walk up and down the heist. <laughs> Nothing to it. What would I be advertising? Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> chicken. <coughs> you do know there are over three million unemployed. Yeah, I know that. Yes. But did you know they all come here? I suppose you think that's easy, don't you? Well, let me tell you, it's not easy. It's driving me mad. Here, you can sort through them. I'm going for an interview. <laughs> interview. Where? What for? Wine bar. Waiting on, clearing away, emptying ashtrays, that sort of thing. He says if I'm satisfactory, he'll set me on straight away. Oh, well, let me look at you. <laughs> He's not going to set you undressed like that. And look at those nails. That's all right. There's a uniform. Well, there better be gloves with it or they'll all go down with salmonella. <laughs> look, I've got to go. Now, wait a minute. What, what are you going to say to him? I don't know. You don't know? What do you ought to know? I don't know who he's going to ask. You should be prepared for anything. Now, come here. Come here, sit down. Now, I'm doing the interview. Imagine I'm F.G. Fielding. Now, he's very good at interviews, very searching. Why do you want this job? For the money. Well, that's your first mistake. Don't mention money. It's a delicate subject. Keep off it. It's the truth. We're not dealing with the truth. We're dealing with interview technique. Dull cues are full of people who tell the truth. Do you have any special skills? <laughs> well, say something. No, but I don't think you need any special skills for this job. Oh, that's great, isn't it? You've just told this bloke he's probably been in the trade all his life that he's got no special skills. <laughs> Cigarette? Oh, thanks. Don't take it. <laughs> Why not? Could be a trap. Just say you do smoke, but only occasionally and never near food. Drink? No, thank you. Oh, come on, Matthew. The bloke's just offered you a drink. There's no need to be antisocial. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Like a drink? <laughs> Only occasionally and never near food. <laughs> well, what is your health like? Fine. Good. 
at the moment. Just got over glandular fever and I still get these blinding headaches, but apart from... Wait a minute, wait a minute. You just said your health was good. You sound like a physical wreck. In fact, you're making a very bad impression. I wouldn't give you a job, and neither would F.G. Fielding. Not the way you're conducting yourself. You've got to sell yourself, Matthew. It's all right for you. You've got a job. Well, that doesn't make any difference. I have to sell myself every day. You mean to F.G. Fielding? What are you getting at? Well... All this week it's been F.G. Fielding this and F.G. Fielding that. All of a sudden he's wonderful. Even his daughter's blooming. <laughs> but I don't call that selling yourself, I call that crawling. I do not crawl. You're a yes man. I'm not. But you wouldn't disagree with him, would you? Well, I would if it was a matter of principle. Principle? If F.G. Fielding said it was a nice day, you'd agree with him, even if it was peen it down. What did you say? Well, I'm not a yes man. I'll get that job on merit. I'm not asking any favours. A fair day's pay for a fair day's work, that's all I ask. I'm not selling my soul. I bow to no man. I value my independence too much. <laughs> you couldn't give me a lift down, could you? <laughs> no. Nice place, F.G. Yes, I usually drop in here at lunchtime. Good service. Tolerable house wine, and we won't be disturbed. Give us a chance to have a quiet chat about the future. Know what I mean, Henry? I think so, F.G. I've been watching you, Henry, and I like what I've seen. Thank you. Yes, the way you're... prepared to stay late and finish the job, not worrying about what time you get home. Of course, you live alone, don't you? Uh, no family ties, no commitments. That's right. Yes, I like that. Shows you're 100% international. <laughs> and that's my department. Are you listening, Henry? Uh, yes. Had you been in my department, your work would have been recognised. <laughs> well, of course, you've always been under... Clark. What do you think of Clark? Well, he's uh, conscientious, have you? He's a pillock, Henry. <laughs> he's a conscientious pillock. Dead wood, Henry. And when the reorganization comes along, you may find yourself absorbed into my department, and that, of course, will place you in my gift. I see. Now then, Squire, what's he doing out there? I beg your pardon? Looks a bit threatening early. I think we might have rain by this afternoon. I don't want a weather forecast. Just take the order, will you? Right. Well, there's uh, pizza romana, siciliana, marinara, napoletana, margarita, and the uh, speciality of the day, pizza quattro stagione. We'll have two pizzas, napoletana and a carafe of the house white. Si. Thank you. Prego. Strange young man. I imagine he's mentally retarded. Two pizzas, napoletana. Yes, uh, you were saying you lived alone, Henry. Henry? Yes? You live alone? Yes. Yes, of course, that always worries the board. They always think there's something... There's not something. Oh, no, 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 I was divorced seven years ago. Once bitten, twice shy, F.G. Yes, yes, that's how Harriet feels. Harriet? My daughter. Oh, yes. You remember, you met her at the sports day. You were in the sack race together. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. She said how much she enjoyed meeting you. Did she? Mm. It was nice to see her smile again after what that bastard did to her. Uh, which bastard's that? <laughs> her ex-husband. Uh, perhaps you met him. He used to work at International. Not anymore. I saw to that. You mean... <laughs> You're going to the outing to Stratford this year, Henry? Stratford? Yeah. Tame the truth. Shakespeare. We're going. Oh, what a pity. I forgot to book. And I think all the seats have gone. Oh, well, why don't you have my ticket? What? Yes, yeah, it's a bit nice for Harry to have some younger company for a change. Well, I'm not that young FG. I don't think well, Harry... Well, we'll ask her, shall we? I said I'd meet her here. Oh, good. Two pizza Napolitana. Oh, sorry, sir. I want to speak to the manager. Well, don't do that. It's my first day. And your last. No, it, it was an accident, F.G. You, you have this one. I'll have that. I don't mind. Sure, isn't it? Hardly marked, F.G. <laughs> Besides, it wasn't his fault exactly. No, no. I blame the parents. 
Well, you only have to look at him, see what sort of comb he comes from. Oh, here's Harriet. Harriet. Hello. Harriet, you remember Henry? Oh, yes. I haven't seen you since we were in the sack together. Pardon? At sports day. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you caught, signorina. Oh, no. It was far too expensive to leave lying around. Oh, I didn't know it was real. Of course it's real. Just take the order, will you? See. Si. I'll have the soup. <laughs> Are you, uh, you sure about the soup? The pizza's very nice. The soup's very good here. I'll have the soup. The soup di cipolli, presto. Harriet, I was just suggesting to Henry that he might like to take my ticket for the Taming of the Shrew. I, I do have a lot of work on at the moment. Oh, yes. That would be super. Well, I'm not too you sure. You don't have to make up your mind now. We'll, we'll talk about it. You must come over for dinner one night. Oh, super. What do you say, Henry? Super. <laughs> oh. Get get don't worry, I'll get it clean. Well, it's not your responsibility, Henry. So, oh, yes, it is. You see, he's my... He's my... <laughs> he's my son. <laughs> what? Yes, and like me, he's been a little too eager to please. Just send the bill to me, Harriet. Oh, and uh, this is for the meal. Keep the change. Grazie. I mean, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Well, I'd better be going. I've got a great deal of work on at the moment. Oh, and uh, I think we'd better forget the taming of the shrew. I've been through all that. <laughs> Don't fancy it again. <laughs> You're back early. I got the sack. <laughs> so he did complain? No. The three other people did. <laughs> it frightens me. It only lasted a few hours. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps I am unemployable. No, don't look at it like that. At least you got the job. Against competition. If you can get one job, you can get another. Dad, I was the only one who could get into the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind. Since you're not going to make a waiter, you might as well get back to your studies. Right. Thanks for sticking up for me. That's all right. I found some change. Where do I put it? <laughs> put it in the music box on the top shelf behind the bars. There's a secret compartment under the lid. Aren't we going to a lot of trouble? Do it, Enid, if you don't want to be deafened by an electric guitar. The small music box. Well, that's where I'm putting it at the moment. The one that plays Little Brown Jug. You might think of looking there. Oh, you'll need a chair. Oh, and make sure he's out of the room. We don't 